The Earth Resources Lab, ERL, is the home of applied geophysics at MIT. That's the lab that studies all questions having to do with the subsurface, uh, both in science and engineering. The mission of the lab has evolved through the years and is now strongly aligned with goals of sustainability and renewable energy. So we look at questions such as carbon capture and sequestration, how to deploy and uh, prospect for geothermal energy, where should it be done and again in what kind of formations, and all sorts of questions related to monitoring of activities in the subsurface such as uh, seismic imaging for instance. So those are all the activities that uh, are now geared toward uh, sustainable energy. The principle of carbon mineralization is that we take carbon dioxide and inject it into mafic rocks such as basalts that form the ocean floors. And these rocks are highly reactive and turn the carbon dioxide into carbonate minerals. This would provide a more stable solution to the long-term storage of CO2. Because right now, there are um, many other um, solutions to store the CO2 but most of them will be like storing them into these reservoirs. So the CO2 is really dissolved rather than being solidified into solid minerals. So there's a, a number of uh, CO2 emissions uh, that we just cannot uh, easily replace uh, for coming, for example, from agriculture or air travel. So we need to have some uh, technologies available that will allow us to capture the CO2 that would be otherwise emitted into the atmosphere and um, uh, mineralization has its advantages and its challenges and is basically one of the many possibilities that uh, researchers are looking into how to capture and effectively store CO2 over geologic timescales. Over the past few years, we had this project where we wanted to understand better how to extend the bandwidth of a seismic shot record. So this project started because of the difficulty of performing waveform inversion for seismic imaging. There's um, big roadblocks to performing the optimization needed to invert for the map of the subsurface from seismic measurements. So I mainly work on seismic uh, bandwidth extension because the seismic signals is typically missing the low frequency part, especially uh, below 3 hertz. Uh, there are many reasons for that. However, the low frequencies are very important for seismic imaging of the subsurface structure. Machine learning has began to play a more and more important role in computational geophysics. For example, in seismic imaging, seismic inversion, also uh, earthquake detection, and so on. In all of this research area, and people already started to use machine learning on, and it's really how very promising results. So machine learning brings new tools to geophysics that are not going away anytime soon. Essentially, they're uh, agnostic prediction engines. They're uh, black boxes that allow you to extract structure from data without the need of underlying physical models. Where the, and so that's the point where there are big opportunities for making progress, is that things that were not swept by, um, if you want, old physical modeling will now be discovered by deep learning. The future to us is that of a decarbonized society. It's enough carbon negative technology to offset the harmful effects of what we currently have. Our belief in the lab is that the environment will play a role in the design of these solutions and it's not all about solutions in a box such as batteries for instance. So there is an enormous role for geophysicists to play in designing those technologies and also helping monitor their effect in the environment.